Hey guys, Wes here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can implement continuous integration using GitHub Actions. One of the reasons that I really enjoy using GitHub Actions is because it's built directly into GitHub. And since a lot of the code that I work on is already hosted on GitHub, I use it as a remote, then it's extremely simple to get set up automating a lot of tasks that I'd like to include in my continuous integration loop. And so in this video, we're gonna be using a project that I built a couple of years ago. It's a natural language processing project that is concerned with doing sentiment analysis and some basic NLP tasks. I actually live streamed that project a couple of years ago. I'll put a link in the description to uh, those videos if you're interested. In this video, we're gonna look at specifically how we can automate things like running unit tests, running our linter, building on various versions of Python, and actually creating release artifacts anytime that we either push to a branch in our repository or we cut a new release through GitHub. So with that, let's dive into the code and see how we can get this set up. Okay, so here we are in the root of the project for which we would like to run some GitHub Actions. And so in order to set this up, we need to create a new directory at the root of our project called .github. And then within this directory, we need to create a subdirectory called workflows. And so GitHub will look in this workflows subdirectory for any YAML files in which we'll specify the workflows that we'd like to run. So the first one here will just be a build workflow. So we'll call it build.yaml. And for any workflow that we have, we need to specify a name. So I'm gonna call this one build and test. And we're gonna actually build and test using different versions of Python. And so now we need to specify an on directive here, and this is required for us to actually name the particular GitHub event that we'd like to trigger the workflow. In our case, we're going to trigger on any push to any branch, but we can uh, trigger on multiple events, so things like pushes or pull requests or uh, releases. And there's a lot of flexibility here. For one thing, we can essentially trigger on any GitHub event but we can also get uh, more granular for any particular event. So let's say that we only wanted this workflow to run on push to specific branches. And so let's just say I wanted to only run when we push to master or when we push to some release branch and we can use wildcard syntax as well. So a lot of flexibility here. In our case, we're just going to run whenever we push to any branch. Next, we need to specify the jobs that we'd like to run for this workflow and GitHub is going to actually be able to run multiple jobs in parallel for us. So here, let's specify a build job. And now we need to specify the image that we'd like the, the, uh, the CI runner to run on. And in this case, we're going to uh, run on Ubuntu latest. At the time of this recording, GitHub offers three images, I believe, uh, an Ubuntu image, Mac OS and Windows, but it also allows you to run a local CI runner. So this will be running remote on GitHub servers, but we can also set it up to run locally if we'd like even more fine, fine grained control over the image that we're running on. And now we're going to use a feature that I find really pretty cool, which is uh, using this strategy directive. And what this allows us to do is essentially to parameterize our builds by creating a matrix of parameters that we would like to ensure get run. In this case, we're just going to parameterize one thing, which is the Python version. And when I built this project, I believe I was using Python 3.8, but let's say that we wanted to ensure that it builds and that unit tests pass for these three minor versions of Python 3. So we're gonna parameterize this Python version value, and then let's see how we can use it. So for this uh, particular build job, we're gonna have a series of steps, and uh, we're going to use a built-in action called actions checkout v2 v2 is just the version of that particular action and the step name will be build using python and now uh, since these these jobs will be running in parallel for each uh, each of these parameters we're going to uh, just make use of that using some templating syntax here we can key into matrix 
Python version now to, um, to essentially name this step build using Python 3.6, 7, or 8, depending on which uh, job is actually running. So that's pretty cool. This particular step uses actions set up Python at v2. Again, v2 not referring to Python version 2, but to the, the, the actual revision of the action. And here it's expecting us to provide a Python version. And so we, of course, have access to that because we've parameterized it. And so we're going to use the same uh, in string interpolation here to do that. So we have this matrix Python version variable. And so this again is going to get 3.6, 7, or 8, depending. And now that we've set up Python on the container that we're running on, let's install our dependencies. And I think I'm going to name it like this. And here we're going to run a few different things. First, let's just make sure that pip is installed. Obviously, this video, uh, we're doing a Python project, uh, but I won't get into the specific details about, um, about anything Python specific here. Essentially, just sh demonstrating that we can install dependencies as a step. We're going to install flake8, which is just a linter to make sure that our code is formatted as we'd like. And then we're going to write a simple bash script here, which is saying if test that the file requirements.txt exists, then we're going to use that to pip install the requirements listed in it. So the way that this is working is we have a requirements.txt file. This project only has a few dependencies, and in fact, they're just related to running tests and code coverage. And so uh, here we're just running the bash script. If uh, test that the requirements.txt file exists, then we're going to install those requirements listed in that particular file. Then we're also going to install this project itself as an editable module. Again, not to get too Python specific, but this is looking for a setup.py file that we have here. And in doing this, it's going to allow us to import from the project itself throughout various files. So I'm actually using from Limbus, which is the project itself. And then we can uh, import the various submodules within this particular project. Okay, so essentially we now have installed our dependencies and now we're going to run our linter. And this is a one-liner. We can just flake eight the directory that we're in. And likewise for running our unit tests. And here we'll run pytest. Okay, so now we've built out our first workflow that essentially runs for three different versions of Python 3. It's going to check out our directory. It's going to uh, set Python up on the, that particular image. It's going to check out our uh, GitHub repository, set up Python on the container that's running the particular test job with the specific parameterized version of Python that we have, install our dependencies, run the linter, and run unit tests automatically any time that we push to any branch. So in order to actually test this out, all we really need to do is push to our GitHub repo. So let's give that a shot. So I've created this build file. And now I'm going to push to the directory, and then we'll head over to GitHub to watch our action in progress. So if I head over to the Actions tab, we can see all the previous uh, runs that I've run for this project in the past. Um, we can also filter by the particular workflow name. So in this case, we gave it a build uh, test Python 3, 6, 7, and 8. And let's take a look at the separate jobs that are running in parallel, one for each version of Python. And so our jobs are now running and completing successfully. If we take a look, it's got a really nice GUI here to view some logs for each of the steps in our workflow. So we can see it installed our dependencies, it ran flake8, and we got some output there. It ran our unit tests, 
and then it has some uh, cleanup tasks that it does at the very end here. Okay, so that's a simple demo of running actions. Let's take a look at what would happen if we wanted to actually package our project anytime that we cut a release. So I'm going to head back here in work, into workflows and we're going to create a new file here called release.yaml. And it's going to look much the same as the, the build.yaml, except we will actually uh, package our project and create a build artifact. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy the contents of our build. And here we're going to name this particular workflow. Uh, let's, let's call it create release artifact. And so rather than on push here, we're going to on release, any time that we actually publish a release, we want to run this workflow and we'll rename our job here, create release artifact. So here, of course, we'll still run on Ubuntu latest. I'm going to use uh, just Python 3 here instead of all of the different, uh, the different matrix of uh, Python versions here. So I'm going to get rid of the strategy directive and then we're going to check out our repository. We're going to build using Python 3.7. And then here we're explicitly just going to specify version 3.7. Then we'll install our dependencies. We'll, uh, we can lint and run tests again if we like. But now we're gonna have some additional steps here to actually create the build artifact. And again, this is just Python specific, but we're going to run Python setup.py sdist. This is going to give us a dist directory that's going to contain a, a, a zipped uh, release build for us. And so let's go ahead and uh, here we have to do something kind of tricky. So I'm gonna call this get release name. And this is something that I wish GitHub would, would make uh, a little bit easier for us. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this ID get release name. And then we need to run a command here to essentially get the release name from the tag. So we're going to cut releases by tagging our release uh, branch or our master branch, let's say. And uh, so here's how we're gonna do that. We're going to echo set output name, and we're going to give it this uh, variable name version. And here we need to actually get the GitHub ref slash refs slash tags. And so when we tag our release, we really just want like whatever the release is, version 0.0.1 .0 or whatever. So this will allow us to just get the version number without the prefix on it um, that we'd get if we just uh, if we just use GitHub ref. Okay, so then we are going to actually upload our build artifact. And this uses a built-in action, actions, upload artifact. Here we need uh, version two as well to do what we wanna do here which is use a wildcard. So we're gonna say with name and we're going to give this build artifact a name. And here, let's just grab that uh, version number that we, that we got out, um, which was the whole reason for getting it so that we can actually name this file, get release name dot outputs dot version, which we can see here. Okay, and then we need to provide it a path and this will just be anything that's in our disk directory. And when we run Python setup.py sdist, it's gonna create that disk directory as mentioned. And within it, there's going to be like some uh, build artifact and it might be tarred up and zipped or it might just be zipped. Um, but in any case, we can grab whatever it's named in there using this wildcard. Okay, so now we have a second workflow and this workflow will only be uh, triggered on publishing a new release. So let's go ahead and commit our changes here and then uh, take a look at how we can invoke this action. Okay, so I'm pushing, this will actually invoke our previous build workflow. So we'll head back into our actions. We can see that that's running again. Nothing has changed about this, uh, nor has our source changed. So we should expect to see these pass very shortly. And so as these are passing, that's looking good. 
Let's head over back into our code and let's cut a new release. So we'll come over into releases and here we're going to create a tag and we're going to call it version 0.0.1-0.1 dash, I'm going to call this uh, exp for experimental. And here we're going to target our actions branch, which is what I'm currently working on. So now let's click publish release. And so this action or event rather has actually now triggered a GitHub action. And if we head over here, we can see that it is actually running. So let's take a look. This is running those, uh, those three separate unit tests. And then if we take a look at our create release artifact job, we can see that it's also completing successfully here. And what's really cool about this is directly within the GUI, we can see over here on the right that we can download the artifacts that we created. And it looks like it's not actually picking up that version name. So let's see if we can uh, fix that really quickly. Oops, and it's just because I have a typo here which should be set output, I believe. And now let's run our, uh, let's commit the change first of all. Okay, we'll head back to GitHub. I'm going to create a new release and this one we'll call version 0.0.1 experimental two, specify the branch that we'd like to run it against and then we'll go ahead and publish. And now again, let's head back to our actions. And so we've kicked off uh, building new release artifacts. And so this one has completed. And now we can see that we have the appropriately named file. And so it's now, the name is uh, is Limbus dash, the tag that we created when we cut the release. And usually we wouldn't have a, a dot between the V and the number, but just a small detail here. Um, okay, so now we can see that we completed the job. And in fact, we uh, were able to create that build artifact upload it to GitHub so that we can actually download it as an artifact. So you can imagine that there are th other things that we might wanna do here. We might want to push that artifact to like an S3 bucket or to Artifactory. We could create other downstream workflows where we install that particular binary into a container. Um, just a ton of different things you can imagine automating, uh, essentially triggered off of any type of event that you could trigger in GitHub. Okay, so that's pretty much all it takes to get started with continuous integration using GitHub Actions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what types of tasks you've automated using GitHub Actions and whether or not you found it useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you around.